to the finale of Shinnok's Uprising. Last time, we just completed all the factions, including Nightwolves and Sub-Zeros, and everyone has reunited and gathered the forces needed to uphold against Shinnok and Quan Chi. And the Athenian melee commenced along with the Tarkatans, the Saurians, the Shokan, the Centaurs, and the heroes from Earthrealm and Edenia. And Katana and Jay just led them through the subterranean prison tunnels in order to save the prisoners of war, including Katana's family and such. And Lau and Aiko were able to save Kai from Raiko inside one of the massive prisons. But it actually turned out to be a disguise by Shinnok, who absorbed Aiko's cardiokinesis and made Aiko and Kung Lao weak enough to go into the Nether Realm in order to lure in the champion Liu Kang. But this is it, guys. The finale of Shinnok's Uprising. I can't wait to do this. And I can't wait to do the third book in the series, Mortal Kombat Vengeance. So without further delay, let's get this thing going. Showdown with Shinnok. The fire well was surrounded by flames and its walls were decorated with the skeletal remains of defeated warriors. The skulls of some fighters even littered the marble floor and hellfire burnt endlessly and deeply behind the creepy grates. There appeared to be only one entrance from a dark hallway. With the intimidating decor, the firewall was no doubt part of the hoary nether realm, as Hellfire burnt endlessly and deeply, and the fallen elder god Shinnok awaited his incoming challengers, eagerly to add to his collection of mutilated bodies as fresher additions to his army and worshippers. Because he is a necromancer like Quan Chi. We all know the story of MKX. With the champion and the two gods that shall fall and meet the same fate when Raiden banished him from the heavens millennia ago, Aiko was held captive and still comatose as was Kung Lao after they were both incapacitated by Shinnok's mimicry of her cardiokinesis by draining their vitality rapidly. They were entrapped in chains and shackles within the metal walls at the tower's epicenter as he was manipulating their hearts, feeding them with dark illusions of their dystopian future and more so towards the unfortunate autistic, convincing that society has always used people like her as a punching bag. Same with Kung Lao. Thus churning their hearts as well as themselves into his mindless slaves, Shinnok had observed of his reign over Earthrealm. He grew quite intrigued that many heroes had fallen and served him and his treacherous sorcerer, Quan Chi. If Kung Lao was part of his own revenant army once, then he shall do so again, with his soulmate by his side, reunited within the tempting darkness. And it does seem rather tempting. Shinnok kept feeding Aiko that all of the Earth Realm all of Earthrealm was against her mental defects and that only the Hermit Kingdom, the Order of Light, was her only salvation, even for her flawed, weak self. He promised it would soon fall once he'd reign over Adini after killing the gods and their skilled champion. Kung Lao was also fed dark illusions of fa failing everyone and thus being churned into revenants thanks to Raiden's negligence and betrayal upon his futile efforts. He must fight and destroy them in order to prevent this inevitable calamity. He also was sure that his best friend would join his ranks as well. At the same time, while Shinnok was manipulating their hearts, he was empowering their wounded organs utilizing his own blood and energy. Momentarily, their vessels took a jolt as they absorbed his essence and his conniving words. Until finally, as they gained enough strength, they gazed upon their new leader, showing their altered, illuminous hues. While Shinna completed applying blood around their eyes, symbolizing the loyalty to the Brotherhood of Shadow. He is tempting indeed. 
Courtesy from the portal, it didn't take long for Liu Kang, Raiden, and Fusion to traverse through the Nether Realm and dismay any of the damned hindering them. Raiden and Fushin were slightly hindered being at a remote realm, though it was little too simple for the godly brothers utilizing their strength. There! Raiden pointed the twisted tower of about 150 feet, had a very sharp and crooked end, as if they'd been rows of devil horns protruding as steeples from a temple. This is Shinnok's true domain! <clears throat> Where he once encountered Bi Han when he stole the amulet! Where is he holding Kung Lao and Aiko? I must go after them! Liu Kang, wait! We must enter through here discreetly, if Shinnok is still deep while trancing them. Now. Now. You know what you must do, my pawns. Kung Lao and Aiko walked up to their new ruler and made a kowtow. Shinnok took out his precious amulet, knowing that victory was within his airlocked grasp. Kung Lao! I go! The Shaolin monk ran into the well from the opaque hall. He was nearly out of breath, his heart reaching his throat upon his desperation and the horrid climate. He was cut short by force as he witnessed his friends face him with their eerie and nerve-wrecking looks. Their eyes glowed as bright as the surrounding flames amongst the dark. Blood surrounding them. Shinnok rose a hand, halting the duo. What have you done to them? Given what they always wanted. Their heart's desires was to exact revenge on the rigid, cruel societies that has betrayed them. I just fulfilled their true destinies, and they were willing to extinguish the light within themselves. All I needed was to give them a little beat. No! Let them go! If it's me you want to dissuade the champion and rule all realms, I'm here! Take me instead! What do you want with them? The Elder Gods had enlisted the puny gods and angels to fight for them. I was casted aside by Earth's guardian, that wretched lightning god. But, unlike him, I gave these unfortunate souls a higher purpose. Once Adenia and Earthrealm are in my power, I will be infinite! Hearing some familiar screaming gibberish, Shinnok was knocked off his feet by an air tackle. He rose with a tad of effort, though he was gleeful to see his arch nemesis face to face after what seemed to be an eternity. Kung Lao and Aiko do not belong to you, Shinnok. Or do they? The demonic elder god snickered and waved a hand. This is actually from MK10. Remove the shadow from the light. The shadow grows. The legacy of life is death, Raiden. My followers accept this and live on. You have robbed them of their freedoms, as you did with mine. Now, just like everyone in this treacherous world, always suffering the same terrible fate as I. They fight for me. As if on cue, as if Shinna communicated in telepathy in Laos and Aiko's minds, they ran into the fray. The cardiokinetic activated her empowered abilities onto Liu Kang and Raiden, stunning them, while the Oriental charged with his hat drawn. He made an aerial kick with his hat, leaving a nasty gash in Liu's chest. Without a choice, he unleashed his pyrokinesis, but Lao teleported and sicked him from behind. He threw his fatal hat, wanting to decap decapitate Liu's head like he did with Raiko but was immediately caught in a strong grip as Lao was blown a few feet away. To their surprise, it was Fusion. Stop! You two don't have to fight each other. Shinnok has manipulated Lao's and Aiko's hearts. He's been feeding their dark desires, exacting his revenge onto the gods. To take all realms by force, he's been masquerading. He was hit by Shinnok's and Umbrakinesis while he reached in his heart disabling both his and Raiden's vitality. Fushin spoke to Liu in Mandarin, and he obliged. Well, 
He's an elder god. He should know a lot of languages. While Shinnok was still distracted, absorbing the god's loop, performed a direct bicycle kick onto his chest. His last kick was more direct and forceful, which caused the golden amulet. No! Lu was about to reach for the ma magnificent relic that was until Kung Lao teleported just centimeters away from it. He snatched it up and spin kicked Lu onto his chest. Master! His voice was altered with a two-tone, and he threw it back to the warlord's clutches. He sneered and commanded Aiko to attack Lu's heart. With the gods still weary, Shinnok used his telekinesis to draw him closer. Meanwhile, at the Edenian prison, the team met up with Katana and Jade still shell-shocked on the disappearance of the quintet. What happened? Where's Liu Kang and the others? Brayden said that Kung Lao and Aiko were dragged into the nether realm by Shinnok. Yes, and Brayden opened a portal there, leading him, the Wind God, and Liu to his twisted palace. Everyone grew just as stupefied as the women. The special forces agent broke the tense silence. Well, I managed to open a portal into Earthrealm, escorting the prisoners. That set the Adenian princess at ease, knowing his family safe. Her family's safe. Nightwolf, can you help form a portal with a generator leaning straight to it? All he did was sulk. I'm afraid it's not possible. That made the heroes more irritable. Why not? The nether realm can only lead to the immense and eternal darkness that could absorb light and even time. It's literally hell. Technology was never able to reach that far. It's a spiritual plane, only existing for corrupt souls. Unless a deity like a god or elder god would crack it. His mind then flashed back to the lecture he had with Raiden. Back when his base was dry and active before Khan's invasion lost Earthrealm's stability, that thus destroying it. And I'm sure you heard all this before in Defenders of the Realm. Trap, one that's captured many a mortal. <clears throat> Relying too much on machinery and not enough on gut instincts. You're a shaman. You've got great <clears throat> inner tools. Why don't you forget about that and try this? Nightwolf sulked for a short while, until it dawned on him. This all started in Egypt. Maybe it's time I check it out for myself. His mind returned to the present and faced to the Adenian. Katana, you have a close bond with Liu Kang. Maybe with your help we can access where he is upon metaphysics. She obliged. Here, take this. The shaman handed over the tomahawk, empowered by his ancestors, which ignited in a neon green light. It was warm on contact. With this, we shall see Lu's predicament as we can focus onto him, of his trials and tribulations, our memories and our loyalty to him. Katana reached without hesitation. Both of her and Nightwolf's hands held onto it like a precious memo. Now. Focus your thoughts onto him. They closed their eyes and images of him appeared in their minds. They saw the firewell as bright and clear as day. Lou was struggling against Shinnok's hold. <gasps> Lou! I know where he is! He's fighting Shinnok! And... We're losing him! Everyone muttered in strange tones. Everyone! We must focus our energies onto the champion! We can still help him indirectly and give him some of our own strength. As long as we can focus on Tlu Kang and our memories and strong bonds onto him, maybe he'll stand a chance. Heroes did just that. He can join more of his spiritual energy charging the tomahawk like a battery. Remembering what they'd done a couple years ago at the balcony before he fought Shao Kahn, excepting Jade and Johnny, Nightwolf urged them. And now, attempt to focus on your duty at the moment, all on the champion, on his well-being. Think of him as someone you care deeply for. 
Knowing that Lou is their only hope, there were several other more spectators joining in, including some outside help that were involved in the melee. Back in the fire, well, Shinnok continually absorbed Lou's heart until his life energy abruptly changed into a more lighter and tranquil hue. Upon the drainage, the Overlord began to have visions as he read the monk's heart of all the peaceful and positive moments throughout his life, including his cooperative victory over Shao Kahn thanks to Kung Lao, the brief reunion of his brother Chan after decimating Shang Tsung, to the White Lotus Society welcoming Aiko to his rare and heartfelt moments with Katana. All those memories even flashed before Liu Kang's eyes aside from his whole life, which made Shinna cringe and back away. Liu fell on all fours. Wha- What? What's going on? What is happening to his heart? The same radiance restored the monk's strength little by little. Kung Lao and Aiko, however, remained completely unaffected by Nightwolf's spiritual schemes. They closed in on him, but Raiden beat the former monk to the bolt, conjuring a tiny zap in his heart. Lao's body grinded to a halt and quivered before he lost consciousness. Aiko followed suit with little to no contact. What? Brother, what's going on? Rain attempted to recollect his senses and retain the new intel. It's Nightwolf! He's a shaman! The opposite of darkness and death is the positivity of life and light. <gasps> of course! Now, Liu Kang, attack him while he's still vulnerable. I will detoxify Kung Lao and Aiko at the Jinsei Chamber. Hurry! Nodded while the Guardian warped the two comatose mortals back to their home domain. Shinnok was knocked off his feet after Lu landed a flying kick onto him. He squirmed away and conjured an enchanted staff to appear. The ancient golden scepter known as the Amulet Staff, or the Staff of Shinnok, was the only weapon of the fallen Elder God. The demon stated this Amulet Staff was used to amplify the already great power of the Amulet, in which he placed onto its tip. The amplification of the amulet's powers increased to the point of pure and virtually unlimited power, omnipotence even. The Staff of Shinnok was another treasure considered as sacred by the Brotherhood of Shadow, since it was created solely by the evil Elder God himself. Without any fear nor dread, Liu Kang took the fight. Meanwhile, at the Temple of Elements... Scorpion was successful in disabling traps courtesy of his spear, teleportation, and his fiery breath. Since he had no one to fight, his wrath wasn't consuming him as much and never dissuading him from the mission. Kwai was also decent on activating the defense mechanisms, though he wasn't as sensitive as Hanzo. Instead, he pretty much functioned as brute strength and close combat, while Scorpion was the distant sweeper. I wish they would work well together more. At long last, they reached a spacious chasm consisting of dark gray walls, which stretched into the abyss. The crisp air and enormous height made their skin shiver, even the cryomancers. Sub-Zero remained on his guard while Scorpion continued to follow the skinny pillar connecting to a small platform suspended aloft. There was apparently nowhere else to go. The amulet! You need to relieve it here! For some odd reason, the Wraith hesitated after he drew it from his vest. His partner shouted, Hanzo! We must restore the amulet! I know you must be tempted to usurp it, but it's the only way to save our realm and our families! Scorpion still gazed upon the majestic item, desiring to use it for himself. As if reading his mind, Kwai stormed and tackled him to make the amulet fly out of their grasp. The two ninjas were petrified they lost it forever! Yet, somehow it remained intact, as if that small platform was a magnet to it when it guided the relic safely, and it left it hovering. The amulet rotated freely on that exact location, being imbued by a neon magenta aura. Still, it stopped and darkened. The amulet has been returned. Shinnok should be vulnerable now. Scorpion was just speechless before they heard a boom of thunder which nearly shook the vast chamber. 
Shinnok kept on using his telekinesis to draw the opponent for close combat, while he whacked Liu Kang with his staff and at times drained his short energy courtesy of Aiko. The monk did put up a promising fight, however his stamina can only last very long. How can I defeat an elder god? He was still hunched over when Shinnok stomped toward him and grabbed him by the neck. He raised him off his feet with... While his free hand conjured his staff, even saying a phrase Lou was all too familiar with. Your soul is mine! The staff illuminated its ornamental crate carvings as green as the numerous souls. He held the scepter as he began to absorb the heart of the heroic champion till something happened. The scepter flickered, then darkened, and the gravitational pull was useless. Shinnok was alarmed even when he tried a few more attempts. Yet his weapon never illuminated again. He realized what had happened as for the first time, he expressed grief. You are powerless, Shinnok! Raiden roared as he stepped toward the duo. All this time you have been fooled by an exact duplicate. You may have assimilated Igo's cardiokinesis, but that was only in your possession. Without the real amulet that Quan Chi kept on his bosom, your conquest is finally over. You are finished! Shinnok still remained paralyzed as Liu Kang wound up with a screech. Never! He stuck out a hand only to have it be whacked away by Liu's infernal rage, punching the living essence out of him, making him back away to a certain massive drop. Liu let out a large war cry that can even deafen mortal ears. He hurled his arms back, only to be knocked away by Fujin. Not this time, champion! Not its Raiden, who performed his own finishing move, conjuring as much energy as he can possibly muster, in which the Gigawatts electrocuted, electrocuted Shinnok's body, making it light up like the sacred Jinsei fountain, before the magnitude tossed Shinnok down the well. As he was hollering while flailing his arms, Fujin descended inside a funnel and forced him down blindly fast by an elbow. Massive metallic spikes impaled all over Shinnok's body. He went silent instantly, as did the entire well, even while Fujin was still floating above the murderous blades. He barely saw Shinnok's body go limp. His head rolled to the side, his corpse shrunk into a skeleton, while still wearing the colorful robes and hat and the duplicate shattered into pieces. Raiden and Lu couldn't help but grin at their long-awaited victory, till their joy was broken by Fujin's funnel. He walked up to his elder brother and smacked their hands together. Well done, brother! Indeed. Victory is at hand, finally. They could have sworn the eternal flame surrounding the well completely ceased upon Shinnok's downfall. So you two are the champions now? Yes, we are, Liu Kang. This was our war, and it is thanks to you and your compatriots that helped us succeed. We share the mantle from this day forward. Look on the bright side. At least you would no longer be cursed. Is that why you stopped me? For the first time, the two uneasy gods let out some chuckles. That was until a series of deep-throated moans interrupted the small jubilee. The damned are going to be restless without their satanic warlord restraining them. Despite his aching body, Lu limped toward the open rip Raiden created, and the holy deity was the last to exit. As soon as they saw the portal open at the back wall of the prison, the comrades cheered. Lu barely heard the squeals from Katana, who gave him a tight embrace of congratulations and thanking him dearly for saving his realm and, his, and her family. Nightwolf greeted him a job well done, even though it was technically the gods who finished off Shinnok. I am sure Kung Lao and Aiko shall return to the light again. <gasps> Kung Lao and Aiko! I need to get to the Jinsei Chamber! Within Raiden's sacred sky temple, Kung Lao and Aiko were still motionless as they were recuperating at the heart of the fountain. It still maintained its purity and white essence since it was never tainted by Shinnok. He only invaded the heavens and Adenia, leaving Earthrealm untouched. 
Contrary to Mortal Kombat 10, someone walked up to the comatose duo and he turned up Kung Lao's face. The former monk slowly opened his eyes, still as his groggy self and heavy with his weakened body. The bright light from the sun outside in conjunction with the illuminating fountain made his eyes flutter and squint. His vision was blurry, making out a distorted body with a long ponytail. Momentarily, he knew it was only his mentor, Fusion. Is... Is it over? Have we won against Shinnok? We did defeat Shinnok, and sealed him into the Nether Realm with a restored amulet stationed in Earth Realm. It is done. Kung Lao rose up slowly, and his head cleared for a little while. He looked over, noticing his loved one still unconscious. Suddenly, in came Raiden, whom his eyes saw and recognized almost instantly. Raiden. Shinnok. He made us. He made you. Only see the darkness within your hearts. That's all. An experienced and prudent god who fought off the evil overlord twice, he knew how his manipulation and corruption worked. The conversation recalling Luz Thrall managed to stir Aiko awake as they heard a few groans. Her head tilted and her eyes opened slowly. Her voice was softened but not muffled. The first thing she saw was amongst the heavenly glow was the Thunder God. Raiden? He helped her up. It was terrible. We were controlled by Shinnok. He used us, feeding us with fears. Being vulnerable, powerless, neglected, and churning us into those revenants I saw. It is all in the past now. Shinnok has been defeated, and he shall no longer invade the other realms. His chances on churning you both into the undead and the damned are long gone from this day forward. You have now changed your unfortunate fate. At least for another millennia or so. For the next several hours, Kung Lao and Aiko remained in the Jensei for detoxification from Shinnok's influence and recovered from it. Liu Kang and soon Johnny Cage met up with the duo. The monk forgave the doomed duo. The Lao wasn't whole. Hey, you alright? Physically. Later on, all the heroes returned to Earthrealm at long last. The monks were thrilled to see them thrive against the hellish Elder God, knowing that their home and Adenia are finally safe. Breaking from the large crowds, Kung Jin was excited to see his uncle after so long, especially when always leaving without dropping a buzz during life and death situations. Katana reunited with her family who had vowed to restore all of Adenia and unite with the different tribes under a conjured union. Though the Adenians wanted to stay near the Chinese province a bit longer, and Liu couldn't be more thrilled on showing his soulmate the route. In fact, Jade wanted to make an offer to keep an eye on things while her best friend should take a break and spend some downtime with the former champion. It was just a way to flourish their distant relationship after a few years hanging in the balance. She could have sworn she saw the would they won't they couple kiss. It's about time. Raiden ascended into the tranquil heavens. And this is where you'll see the ending here. Raiden, for many ages you have protected the Earth Realm from the forces of evil. You have burned your place among us. With your ascension into the pantheon of elder gods, you must choose your successor as the new protector of Earth. With the aid of Earth's mortals, I have once again managed to defeat Shinnok and his minions. I choose Fujin. He will guide the mortals of Earth as they move into the next millennia. Explaining this to his children would not be an easy feat, let alone leaving from behind, then behind after several mil million years. 
Fujin was at the center of an octagonal area filled with several doorways. Basically, it's Fujin's ending. Our forces of light have defeated Shinnok. Now, I must return to my duties as Earth's God of Wind. You have served your element well, Fujin. But we have a new mission for you. Raiden? Our battle with Shinnok's forces is over. I must move on to my new position as an Elder God. And you, Fujin, you must take my former position as Protector of Earth. Raiden, it will be my honor to succeed you. Take special care of the mortals of Earth. They are a great people, but have the ability to self-destruct. Be patient, and offer your wisdom and guidance. Farewell, Thunder God. I will not fail you. That is why I picked you. <clears throat> Finally. All right, there are the songs for that. Yada, yada, yada. I'm not sure if you could see it, but if you can't, there's always text files. So, as you all know, I'm not good when it comes to fight scenes. Besides, it wasn't much about the battle, but rather the impacts that Shinnok had caused onto his opponents, even psychologically. It would have had his ultimatum met, but sadly, he didn't have the amulet. It's almost like those scripted final battles like Mother Brain and Super Metroid. I really wanted to better outcome than the one he had in the Netherrealm games. Didn't really like the idea of sealing Shinnok in his own amulet either, like catching a wounded Pokemon until it is released and goes haywire. No wonder Netherrealm decided to reset everything in MK11 and 12. No different than in Sonic 06. Also, I had to cut out Reptile's Lair. Didn't find much use for it, especially since there was a better version in Shell and Monks. Oh, that reminds me. I had to get rid of the Stragglers. Which I will later. At least I didn't screw up in the Firewell's location, and I couldn't wait to show the scary fatality at the bottom of the well. You would always see in the continue screen. I was so damn glad that Shinnok met his maker there, and no one else. And I really wanted Fusion and Raiden to have their taste of victory since, hey, it was their ancient enemy. It's not just Sub-Zero's epic as developers wanted you to believe. Shinnok is their arch-nemesis, and they needed their stories finished. No different than what the first TMNT movie did, and having Splinter went over Shredder since all this was his end of the bargain. Besides, it was a relief not having Lu as champion, and to have his eternal curse reversed after Laos. See my last epic if you want to know more. Unlike in Deadly Alliance. Well, just like all my other stories, the epilogue shall wrap up everything. Until then, this is the Ephron Writer signing out, and I'll see you guys then. I can't wait to get this done.